Hey guys, I am at St. George's Distillery in Alameda, California. This is Lance, he's the master distiller here. Hi everybody. Lance is gonna take us through the process of making an apple brandy from beginning to end. A lot of chemistry involved in this. There is a lot of chemistry, it's very exciting. Awesome, I'm excited to learn. So this is a fermenting tank, yeah? Yes, absolutely. What we'll do is we'll bring in fresh fruit and it's gotta be at the peak of ripeness. We wanna make sure that the fruit is as fully developed as possible so it delivers all the aromas that we love about the fruit. Our goal here is to take, if you will, an olfactory snapshot of what this fruit is all about at the peak of its ripeness. So what happens in here in the tank? So in here, we've got the crushed fruit and once we've got that down temperature-wise, there's a, a cooling jacket around the tank to bring the temperature down below 60 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, we inoculate it with yeast. For apples and pears, we tend to use a champagne strain of yeast, EC1118. It favors sort of cut green apple aromas and flavors in its fermentation. Those are the, the fermentation byproducts that are created. How long is the, is the fruit in here with the yeast? Uh, it's typically about 10 days of fermentation because it's at low temperature, and that low temperature is good for a few reasons. One, that, uh, that fruit that comes in doesn't get, doesn't get sterilized before it goes in, so there's a lot of wild yeast that's on that fruit. It's native to the fruit. And while wild yeast is great for fermenting grapes because you're looking for complexity beyond grape flavor, when you're making something from apples or pears or cherries or raspberries or whatever you're making it from, you want it to smell and taste like that that thing that you're making it from. So you have to have predictable results. So from here, once fermentation is complete, we start pumping into the stills. Uh, take a walk over to the stills. Absolutely. Fantastic. Shark important? What shark? So one of, the, one of the misconceptions that a lot of people have about distillation is that you can just take fruit, throw it in there, distill it off, and you've got something. Mm -hmm. Fermentation, as you just pointed out, has to happen first. Alcohol has to be created. For, uh, distillation is an act of concentrating that alcohol. As it comes up, it goes into the stainless steel pipe that you see there. Yeah. After the, after the pot, everything is stainless steel. Okay. Um, Why is that? Well, if there's any volatile acidity that comes off, and there's always a little bit, uh, that's going to start attacking the copper and creating some compounds that you don't want in okay. your spirit. On the way there, we hit this three-way valve that directs it down to the bottom of this section. If you look on the side here, we have these levers yeah. that I can drop down. And if you look into this window, you can see what dropping that down does. If you look inside there, there's a cup that oh, lowers wow. down and you see it starts bubbling ferociously in there. Yeah. Those vapors, as they're passing through there, they're forced to bubble through a layer of liquid about an inch deep. Okay. The serrations on the edge of that cup make finer bubbles. As they do that, those bubbles are forced through that liquid. There's a slight phase change that takes place. It strips out waterborne impurities, leaves those behind in that liquid. That liquid can then return to the pot. Now, there's a fine line. This is where science meets artistry. You have to figure out exactly how many of those cups and how much pre-cooling you want to make sure that you've got it clean, mm -hmm. but not too clean. If it's too clean, it's vodka. And at that point, why make it out of apples? Why not make it out of whatever the cheapest thing that you can throw in there is, if it's gotcha. just pure ethanol? We want all the things that are gonna come over here, they're gonna, that are gonna tell you where this came from. Oh, to wow. me, that tastes like fresh, ripe apples. As this is flowing through, you can see that it's sitting at 140 proof for 70% okay. alcohol. Wow. But that doesn't tell you how it tastes and how it smells. So it's really important to be able to have this area where you can do a proper sampling of the spirit and know when you're supposed to make adjustments to the still. Cool. As it flows off from here, we'll end up collecting probably about, on this one, probably about 54, 55 liters of high proof spirit. And uh, how, many, how many pounds of apples or gallons of apples did we start with? Uh, we started with 130 gallons of, of apple in this still to okay. be able to get that. Um, so it's a, it's a dramatic reduction. You take all that fruit and you end up with very, very little product from it. So once it's all done here, where does it go? Predominantly in French oak barrels for at least two years, if not a little longer, but we'll go through and we'll sample and see when it's just at its best. Cool, can we go check that out? Why not? So this is where it ends up. 
It is, uh, and this barrel's been here for just under a year, so you just saw what the product was like mm -hmm. fresh off the still. Now we're gonna see with a little bit of time in wood exactly what, what happens with it. So as you can see here, we've yeah. picked up a little bit of color from the wood. Um, some of the other products that we're looking for from that wood are gonna be some of the breakdown products from the oak itself. Uh, as it breaks down, the wood starts to give some vanilla aromas and some cinnamon which if you think in terms of apple pie, mm -hmm. you see how those flavors are gonna work really, really nicely with something like an apple brandy. Why does it pick up things from the wood? Alcohol is a fantastic solvent. If you look at uh, people using it for cleaning, mm -hmm. people using it for, uh, for perfume making, it pulls aromas and holds onto them really well because of its solvent properties. Um, and as it leaches into the wood, it starts to provide a pathway for breakdown of the lignans in the wood, and those lignans end up becoming the, the vanillins. Um, as I understand it, a lot of artificial vanilla is made from wood breakdown. Oh, wow. It starts to provide some softness, additional structure, a little bit more hardiness to it. Um, within another year, it's gonna darken up even more. Um, I get a lot of cinnamon in the finish on that though, uh, which I think is really at home with an apple. Wow. Okay, so we've gone from lab to fermentation to still to aging for five years, and this is the finished product. This is the finished product, and so we we pulled this out of barrel right when we felt that we achieved that balance that we were talking about before of the wonderful apple aromatics and flavors and then the contribution of the barrel that just helps to accentuate all those things. You get this beautiful rich color to it. And then just gorgeous spice on the nose. I get apple and cinnamon again. Wow, that's great. All you have to do is get a whole bunch of fruit, crush uh -huh. it, ferment it, distill it, age it for five years, and you got this. So if people want to uh, grab some of your spirits or jump in for a tasting, how can they get information? Um, our website's a great place for information. It's stgeorgespirits.com, so come on down. You can taste everything. It's a really unique opportunity to be able to see the whole process and sip on some uh, passionately crafted spirits. Awesome. Thank you, Lance. Thanks to the whole crew here. And remember to subscribe right here on D News for more science videos. Maybe about, maybe about alcohol, but I think I've already played my card on that one.